Good day mates, welcome to depredators.com. Today is going to be super exciting. We're going to show you some basic operations for predators analytics. Let's get started. We'll work through first examples for describing data, plotting data, generating new variables, transforming variables, subsetting data, and last but not least, fitting regression models. In the first step, we load the DCR data and code. We use the source method together with the file name dcr.r. We print the data set that has the object name data. The data frame has 62,178 rows and 28 columns. The rows represent unique borrower time combinations and the columns represent features. The features include borrower identifiers like ID, timestamps, like time, rig time, first time, and maturity time, and also features such as the loan to value ratio. In the current output, only a subset of the complete data set is presented. R is an object oriented language, and new objects can be generated through the arrow that is a combination of the lower sign together with the dash. Here we create a new data frame, data2, from the existing data frame, data. We can also subsample features. For example, we can create a new data frame, data2, from the old data frame, data, by using the select function from the package deplier. The package deplier requires two inputs. The first input is the data source, here data, and the second input is a list of feature names. We print the subsampled data. The resulting data frame consists of 62,170 rows and five columns. The five columns represent the subsampled features. R allows the processing of multiple functions subsequently through the concept of chaining. Chaining can be achieved through round brackets. As in the first example, we chain the function print with the function select, or as in the second example, using the pipe operator. The pipe operator consists of three signs, the percentage sign, the greater equal sign, and the percentage sign. Now the so-called pipe operator separates operations and we chain to the data frame the select function and in the second step the print function. We execute the two alternatives and observe that the resulting data frames are identical. We prefer to use the pipe operator as this is a way to clearly delineate operations. Imagine situations where you have 10 functions and you're working with a combination of 10 round brackets. Next, the number of functions that allow us to describe the data. We have chosen three common ones, but many more exist. The first one is the dim function that allows us to infer the dimensions of the data frame by row and column. The second function is the function call names, which gives us a list of the names of the columns in a data frame. And the third function is a summary function that computes summary statistics for the columns of our data frame. The dim function is connected here to the data frame data and the output is printed. We see that our data frame has 62,178 rows and 28 columns. The call names function here is chained to the data frame data and the print function is chained to a call name function. We obtain a list of column names from our data frame. Last but not least, we create a subset of our data frame data, which we label data2, and that includes the features default time, FICO or RIG time, LTV or RIG time, and GDP time. Second, we chain to the data frame data2 the summary function and print the output. We obtain for each column or for each feature a summary. For example, the column default time is a binary indicator variable with values 0 for non-defaulting and 1 for defaulting observations. The mean of this binary indicator is 0.02453, which implies that 2.453% of our population defaults in a given time period. The second feature is the FICO score, which empirically in our data frame has a minimum score of 429 points and a maximum score of 819 points. The mean score value is 
The third feature is the loan to value ratio at loan origination and has a minimum value of 50.1% and a maximum value of 119.8%. The loan to value ratio is an important ratio representing the leverage of a borrower. The mean loan to value ratio at loan origination is 78.7%, which is very close to the origination threshold of 80% of many lenders. And last but not least, we see the summary statistics for the GDP growth. The minimum GDP growth for a given year is minus 4.147% and the maximum growth 5.132%. The mean growth is 1.385%. We can also tabulate categorical information. In the given example, we calculate the number of observations of the variable or rig time, which is the loan origination time. We tabulate all values, we only print the tabulated values with positions 20 to 30. We can also create two-way frequency plots by tabulating the frequencies of two features, in this case the origination timestamp and the observation timestamp. In this case we plot for the origination timestamps the values with location 20 to 30 and the frequencies of the observation timestamp time with the location values 1 to 10. We can also calculate mean values by time. We create a new object called FICO from the original data frame data and calculate the mean FICO values by time using the group by function and the summarize and mean functions for the mean values. We obtain an object that includes the mean FICO scores over time and we print the head of that resulting data frame. This is a very common procedure that we run before plotting data. Remember, our data frame has 62,000 over observations. It's very difficult to plot so many observations, and it is usually very reasonable to aggregate the number of observations to a smaller number of observations using aggregating functions such as the average. Now, for plotting, there are different ways to achieve it. We can plot using different functions in R, a very popular package is ggplot2. ggplot2 offers a ggplot function with aesthetics and geomes. Aesthetics specify the key values to be plotted and the geomes are geometric objects including lines, curves, functions and many more. ggplot has a very unique syntax that it works with layers. In our case we have five layers that are connected by the plus sign. So we connect to our data frame FICO using the pipe operator, the ggplot layer with the aesthetics function, the geom line layer in which we specify the color and the thickness of the line, the labs layer in which we attach labels to the x and the y axis of our plot, and the scale underscore y underscore continuous layer in which we set limits to the y axis that is a minimum of lower value of 400 and a maximum ceiling value of 850. Finally, we add a layer to specify the overall theme and formatting of the chart. Different themes are available and you may explore the internet to find the one you most like. ggplot has many benefits over alternatives such as the plot function. In short, ggplot works with many default options and provides beautiful charts at ease without much coding. Further, we can generate new variables. We can generate new variables by using the mutate function from package deplier. The mutate function is chained to the data frame data and we create a new variable called dummy to which we assign the value of zero. Alternatively, we can also create dummy variables using the mutate function. We can use the function if else that assigns to our variable dummy values of one if the loan to value ratio at origination is greater than 80 and zero otherwise. We can also transform variables using the mutate function. In this particular example, we add to the FICO score 10 percentage points or 10 score points and assign it to a new variable called FICO underscore rig underscore time 2. We can print the head of the original FICO score variable and the transformed FICO score variable. Last but not least, we can estimate a large number of regression models, which is the basis of machine learning. In this particular case, we choose a very simple regression model, a so-called linear model. We execute the linear model using the LM function for linear model and specify left to the till design, the dependent variable, the loan to value ratio at observation, and on the right hand side, the independent 
or explaining ratios or features, loan-to-value low ratio at loan origination, and the GDP growth rate. We further advise a function on the name of a data frame that should be used, in our case, the data frame data. When executing the function LM, the model is fitted and the results are stored in the object data underscore OLS. We can print a summary output chaining to the object name data underscore OLS, the summary function and the print function. We obtain a standard regression output, which at the top specifies our regression formula, a summary for the residuals, the estimated parameters or coefficients, including the parameter estimate, the standard error, the t-value, and the p-value. In our textbook, deepcreditrisk.com, we will estimate a large number of regression models and more advanced machine learning models. That's it, guys. We hope you find this video helpful. Please visit deepcreditrisk.com for data, code, apps, and more. Have a great day. Goodbye.